Hello, my name is Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today we want to look at Pure Mass 3 Transcendental Functions, Part 6, Trigonometry with a focus on the solving. So if you remember in Part 5, we talked about identities. Oftentimes these two question parts, the identities and then the solving are paired together. So we're going to use the same examples that we covered in Part 5, where we used identities to uh, show or prove something. And then we're gonna take over from there in this video and continue on with the problem solving aspect of it. So let's uh, look first at the uh, one of the problems. And if you remember from uh, video five, we did this question first. It's from summer 18, paper 31, number two. And it said, given that sine x minus 60 equals 3 cosine x minus 45, find the exact value of tan x. And we did that. And notice that uh, the, it's using degrees, not radians. This is one of the first things that you want to establish when you're doing trigonometric solving is whether you're working with degrees or with radians, because you have to set the mode on your calculator. You want to make sure your calculator is in the correct mode. Here you can look at the domain statement between 0 and 360. So it says, hence, solve this equation. Well, we know that we've already converted it to a tangent. So this hence, this word hence, connects it back to what we just did here. And that is we change this into a value of tangent. So that's where we're going to pick up here on this question. So I have it here on the board. We have, this is where we left off. We showed that that uh, trigonometric expression, we wrote it in as a tangent x equals, and it was supposed to be exact value, so we couldn't use decimal, 3 root 2 plus root 3 divided by 1 minus 3 root 2. We see that it now wants us to solve this and our domain is in degrees, so make sure that your calculator uh, mode is set to degrees. Usually you'll see a little D at the top of your screen there that lets you know that it's in degree mode. If it's R, it's radian, so make sure it's in degrees. Also pay attention to the allowed quadrants. So since this is 0 to 3360, that means we're allowed all four quadrants. Okay, so that's important to pay attention to as well. And uh, since we don't need that exact value for the solving part, just do that quickly on your calculator and you'll end up with a negative 1.8425. I just took it to four decimal places there. And then we are going to now get rid of the trigonometric function. The moment that you get rid of the trigonometric function, that is when you need to think of which quadrants your answers are going to fall into. So tangent is negative in the second and fourth quadrant, okay? because this is a negative value. So tangent is going to be negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. If it's positive, it would be the first and third, negative, second, and fourth. So now we calculate this on your calculator. Your calculator gives you a value of a negative 61.5. You need to just go to one decimal point when you're dealing with degrees. So one decimal point, negative 61.5. Now, this value, since it's negative, means from your zero on your graph here, here's your zero degrees. So the negative means you're going backwards. So this, this is a fourth quadrant value, but we need to have the value in a positive direction. So what we need is this direction all the way around that way. 
So notice we do not have negative values allowed. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to change that. And since the first through fourth quadrants are allowed, we're gonna also want to figure out the second quadrant value, which will be in this direction. So for the second quadrant value, we're gonna start with our 180 and we're gonna go backwards from that, okay? So we'll start with our second quadrant value here. Our second quadrant value will be 180 degrees minus, or just add it to that negative, uh, the 61.5 is that reference angle. That's the reference angle. The negative was because it was going backwards. So now we take that 61.5, put it in over here, subtract it from 180, and we end up with 118.5 degrees. So that's one of the answers. And then for our quadrant four, we just take 360 degrees minus the 61.5, and that gives us 298.5 degrees. That's the fourth quadrant one. And there are our two answers for the problem. So again, remember you need to be mentally uh, prepared first before you do the algebraic and trigonometric portions. Uh, make sure your calculator is in the right mode. You generally get that from the domain statement. If it's in degrees, if it's in radians, you'll see no degree symbol and you usually see like a pi or pi halves or something in terms of pi if it's radians. So set the mode on your calculator, pay attention to that first thing. Then uh, also look at the domain statement to see what quadrants are allowed as far as your answers go. When you do the inverse trig function, that is when you pay attention to the quadrants that that particular trig function takes. Usually each trig function is positive in two quadrants and negative in two quadrants. So since this one is negative, then you have the second and fourth. If it's both positive and negative, like a plus minus situation, then you have all four quadrants from the trig function, but you need to make sure that your answers fit according to the domain. Also notice we had a negative degree, but our domain is in the positive direction, not the negative direction. Sometimes they will give you negative degree uh, for part of the domain as well. So again, just make sure that the sign or the direction of your degrees match with the domain statement. Okay, so let me set up for the second one. Okay, let's take a look at the second problem here. You can see it comes from summer 18, paper 33, number five. We looked at this in the previous video where we showed that um, sixth to the, or cosine to the sixth power x plus sine to the sixth power x equals one minus three fourths sine squared two x. Then it says, hence, solve the equation cosine to the sixth x plus sine to the sixth x equals two thirds over the domain of zero to 180 degrees. So that hence, again, means to look back. We changed it from this over to the one minus three fourths sine squared two x. So the advantage of this is instead of having two separate trig fun functions in our equation, we can simplify it into one trig function, makes it easier for solving. So let's go back to the board and we'll work on the solving part. And so here we see that we changed the cosine six x plus sine six x into one minus three fourths sine squared 2x that was done in the identities uh, part. And it wants us to solve this equal to 2 thirds. So notice our domain, we are in degrees. Okay, so again, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. Our domain this time only allows first 
and second quadrant answers. So first and second quadrant answers. So let's start our solving. The solving part is just basically algebraic until you isolate the trig function. So if we uh, subtract one here, subtract one, we get negative three fourths sine squared two x equals a negative one third. Divide by a negative three fourths. Negative three fourths. Negative three fourths. And that's going to give us a sine squared two x equals invert and multiply. Negatives cancel, and you get four ninths. Then we want to square root both sides. So we get sine 2x equals plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus because we're doing square root. We need to account for both uh, the positive and negative roots. And then the square root of 4 over 9 comes out as 2 thirds. So plus or minus 2 thirds. Now, We've done all the algebra. At this point, we're at the trigonometric part. So remember, when you do the trigonometric part, uh, that is where you pay attention to the quadrants. So 2x is going to equal the inverse sine of plus or minus 2 thirds. And we, because it's both plus and minus, we need all four quadrants. Don't worry about the domain yet. We'll check that at the end. But we need to have all four quadrants because it is both positive and negative. Sine is positive in the first and second. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So let's first of all get our, our number here. And our number is 41.8. When we get this, we get 41.8. So for the first quadrant, we get 2x equals 41.8. For the second, I've got more space this way. So we're going to have the second quadrant over here. So if we put 41.8, let me give you a little graph over here to the we want to put 41.8 into all four quadrants. Okay, 41.8 is the reference angle. That's what you get when you do the inverse sine of two thirds. The inverse sine of two thirds gives you 41.8. And if you uh, did the inverse sine of a negative two thirds, I believe it gives you a negative inverse sine of negative two thirds should give you a negative 41.8. So it gives you the first and fourth quadrant, which are your principal uh, values from the inverse trig function. So we've got this 41.8 in all four quadrants. Of course, you connect it to the x-axis. Don't don't connect it to the y-axis. The x-axis is your reference point. So that's the 0 or 360 and the 180. So for the first quadrant, and don't forget, all we've done is got rid of the trig function. We still have yet to deal with that 2x, but we need to get our four quadrants first. So over here in the second quadrant, we're going to take 180 minus the 41.8. And if you do 180 minus the 41.8, we get 138.2. So then in the third quadrant, get when we in the third quadrant you're going to add it to 180 180 plus the 41.8 and that gives you 221.8 
And then in the fourth quadrant, we're going to subtract it, go backwards, subtract it from 360. So 360 minus 41.8 is 318.2. Okay, so we got our four quadrants based on uh, when we did the inverse trig function. Now we algebraically need to continue our solving process now that we've gotten rid of the trick function. So we divide by two. So x equals two, zero point nine. So 20.9. And then x equals, uh, let's see here, 69.1. 69.1. And then we get x equals, one, one, zero point nine, and x equals one, five, nine, one. So 20.9, 69.1, 110.9, and 159.1 degrees. Now that we've got x by itself, remember this domain is for x, not for 2x. So now we check it 20.9, 69.1, 110.9, and 159.1 are all within zero to 180 degrees. So you need to check it at the very end. Sometimes you're going to remove some of your answers. And in this case, all of them still pass the domain statement. So here are four answers to that particular question. Okay, let me set up for another one for us to look at. Okay, let's look at our third question here. And we see it says first by expanding cosine two X plus X show that cosine three X equals four cosine cubed X minus three cosine X. So remember this part right here, this four cosine cubed X minus three cosine X, that's going to carry over as it now says, hence solve the equation cosine three X plus three cosine X plus one equals zero over the domain of zero to pi. And this is in radians. So notice that the cosine three X becomes four cosine cubed X minus three cosine X. We're gonna replace this right here with that. Let's go back to the board so that you can see what we're talking about. So <clears throat> this is what it wants us to solve in the second part of the question. Cosine three X plus three cosine X plus one equals zero. Notice Again, that we are in radians. So now make sure you set your calculator mode to the radian mode. And also notice that this is first and second quadrants. Pi is only halfway around. That's at the like 180 degree mark. So from zero to pi is the first and second quadrants. Now back to this, the part cosine three X in the previous uh, part I, this one here is I, I, and the I part was identities, and we demonstrated that cosine 3x is this right here. So it says, hence, solve this. So we make this substitution here that we just demonstrated in the previous identities part, which we covered in part five video. And now we add on this plus three cosine X plus one equals zero. This now is what we want to solve. Notice that our minus three cosine X and our plus three cosine X are going to cancel. So that's going to leave us with four cosine cubed X plus one equals zero, which is four cosine cubed x equals negative one, which is cosine cubed x equals a negative one fourth. Now here we need to cube root 
both sides. So cube root, the cube is the index number in the radical. So we end up with cosine x equals, and the cube root of a negative uh, one fourth is a negative 0.62996, a negative point six two nine nine six that's the cube root of a negative one fourth is this so we've done the algebraic work uh, according to your order of operations to get the trig function isolated now we can solve for this this is where the inverse trig function comes in and you have to pay attention to the quadrants that apply. Cosine is negative. Remember, cosine is like your x axis values. So all students take calculus. Here's your x and your y. Cosine is like your x axis. So cosine is positive in the first and fourth. Cosine is negative in the second and third. So we want second and third quadrant answers. And so when we get that, we're going to end up with x equals a 2.25. Remember, you're in radians. So you, you can expect decimal answers or answers with pi in it. So you get 2.25. This is actually your second quadrant answer. And the third quadrant, we since we're already getting x by itself, we're only allowed the first and second quadrant. So we don't need the third quadrant. But be careful to make sure that you're already at x. Remember before we had the 2x and you need to keep going until you have x by itself. Well now we have x by itself so the third quadrant is not allowed by our domain so this is the only answer that you're going to get for this particular problem. Okay let's look at one more if you remember from our last video the last problem involved tangent and so let me set up for that one. Okay, let's look at the last question that we have for this video. And we see that it comes from winter 19, paper 33, number four. And it said by first expanding tangent to x plus x show that the equation tan three x equals three cotan x can be written in the form tan to the fourth x minus 12 tan squared x plus three equals zero. Hence, solve the equation tan 3x equals 3 cotan x for 0 to 90 degrees. So a couple things to notice. Let's just go back here for a second. In case you're not able to do the part i, okay, in case you're not able to do the part i, and for whatever reason, you can't figure out how to get from this one down to the tan 4 uh, tangent to the fourth power equation. At least they mention what the outcome should be, even if you're not able to get it. So when you don't let that discourage you or keep you from moving on to the solving part, since it says hence, you know that this one turns into this one. So even if you're not able to demonstrate it in the identities part, you can still pick up from here and continue on with the solving part so that you don't lose all the points for this question. So don't, don't let it discourage you. Just keep working at what you're able to get. Okay, so here we're at this. Notice we're back to degrees. So set your calculators back to the degree mode. Always check that first so that your calculator is in the right mode. It's, it's sad to see when students do everything correct, but their answers are not correct because the calculator is in the wrong mode. So make sure you do that first. Check the domain statement, set your calculator, 
see what quadrant that our final answer is allowed. We're only allowed the first quadrant in this case. And uh, all of the solutions have been in the positive direction, but sometimes those domains will go like back to negative 90. Uh, so that would be like if this were negative 90, that would be first and fourth quadrant. Our first quadrant has to be in the positive direction and the fourth quadrant in the negative direction. So just pay attention to uh, how the domain is stated, whether it's in the positive direction or negative direction, and of course, set the calculator. So if we go back and remember what we did in the identities part, this tan 3x equals 3 cotan x turned into 10 to the fourth x minus 12 tan squared x plus 3 equals 0. And if you remember from pure maths 1, this was in the unit called reducing to a quadratic, where the key is this term right here from your quadratic formula. So this is tan squared x. Now, by the way, we know we need to use the quadratic formula because we cannot factor 3 to get a 12. So this does not factor. You should check out the factoring first because factoring is easier and faster. But factors of three do not add up to 12. So we need to do the quadratic formula. Since this is a reduced to the quadratic, this here is our key term. This would be in our ax squared plus bx plus c part of the equation. So instead of x equals, it's tan squared x equals negative b, the opposite of the b, plus or minus b squared, so that would be 144, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So this is the quadratic formula here. This is 12, 144 minus 12 is 132. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get tan squared x equals a 11.745. And you're also going to get a tan squared x equals for the minus one, 8.2554. So you can do that on your calculator. 12 plus root 132 all over 2 will give you this one. 12 minus root 132 over 2 will give you this one here. So we have two different ones. Then we need to square root both sides. So here, when we square root both sides, 10x will give us a 3.427. Plus or minus 3.427. And when we do this one over here, we'll get 10x equals a plus or minus 0 0.5054. So we have all four quadrants for both of these. However, we're only allowed the first quadrant and the first quadrant is the positive quadrant. So we'll just take the plus, we don't need the minus. The minus is for second and fourth quadrants. So this, these, these here would actually be one through four, all four quadrants because of the square root on it would make all four quadrants uh, for that, but because of the domain statement, we're only allowed the first quadrant there, which is the positive one. So when we do this one here, we get x equals 73.7. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of 3.427, and your x is going to be 73.7 degrees for this one, which is your first quadrant answer. X equals the inverse tangent of, again, the positive one, because we want the first quadrant answer. And so X comes out to 
0.8 degrees for that one. And so there are our two first quadrant answers. And uh, uh, this then is what you're looking for. So pay attention to the quadrants generated by the trig function. Careful with your plus or minus when you square root both sides and pay attention to the calculator setting and also the quadrant that's allowed by the domain. You check that at the very end, make sure you're all the way down to X before you start checking that with your domain statement and make sure that it matches both as far as quadrants and also as far as the direction that it needs to go, whether positive or negative with the value of your answer. Okay, so that uh, gives you a look at four different solving situations that uh, are paired with the identities come off of that. And uh, so hopefully that will help you with that part there. So again, thank you for joining me in the Zoom room and hope to see you again next time.